It's 4 o'clock on Monday, and you know what that means. It's time to have some fun in Crazy Town, live on Taxi TV. Yeah, baby, this week starring special guest star Mr. Craig Robert. Woohoo! Live from Sherman Oaks, California. Man, thank you, Fake Man. Thank you, iCarly. I love her. Welcome hey, to the show, everybody. Craig. Hi, Michael. Good to see you. Good to see you. And let's get that audience showing up there there they are all right all of them uh, hello them. John Anna Glenn Martin Adriana we will write you a song Linda Cullen Peter Rahill Lou Lewis uh, Jesse Mark Himley Anna Dean Turner Rahill Sherry yeah uh, Kenda Potter anyway uh, hello all you guys and gals good to see you um, welcome back to another week um so uh let's see i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna use my show notes this week instead mm -hmm. just ad-libbing the entire thing uh already welcome craig to the show oh i need to mention that we just had a listing i it just went out like half hour ago yeah yeah literally um a listing that is minimally for 25k for uh creative fee for a tv commercial we don't know the exact number. We asked the people, and they said, you know, I said, well, you know what? Is it 5K, 10K? And they said, oh, no. I said, 25K. And they went, yeah, minimally. Wow. So um, it could be more than that, but we felt safe saying 25K, and that's for the creator side. Um, also, we've been getting a ton of new listings. Uh, I think we had another library or two in the last week that have come to us for more music or come to us for music period um and just either late last night or early this morning a music supervisor friend of mine shot me five listings he has not yet run listings with taxi before so we're excited to be doing stuff for him so we got listings coming out of our ears and everywhere else and yeah uh, yeah it's a good time Yay. to be a member so I'm going to do this now because Bria is going to be kicking me under the table if I don't. If you're watching this, um, you know, in the archives, like after the show is live, click the subscribe button. Can you click the subscribe button when you're watching live? Well, then, click that button right now. What is YouTube really like? They like it when you share, just like your mother told you. Share your toys, Johnny. And like us. Okay, I've done all of my responsibilities. Bria can quit kicking me under the table. Good thing she didn't <laughs> wear her pointy shoes. Um, so, I literally know nothing about what I'm about to be asked, but about three weeks ago, I was going through some notes that I had asked you guys, our faithful viewers, about, I don't know, some months ago, if you guys had any ideas for shows. And somebody said, why don't you have an, uh, a taxi member interview you? Um, and I went, okay, I think Shirelli, Rob Shirelli interviewed me on the show probably like four years ago or something. Um, but yeah, I've never had a member interview me on the show. And it's a no holds barred interview. He can ask me anything. I'm bound to be embarrassed at some point. Um, nah. Nah? Nah. Nothing that tough. I, I told him, I said, you know, ask me the tough stuff. But I, I, I do want to tell you, uh, before we can <laughs> hang in there, Craig, you get your chance. <laughs> I want to read your bio. Oh, cool. um, so, Craig uh, is a keyboard player and a program, program synths and stuff, uh, does recording, mixing, mastering, producing. He's also the music director of Notorious, a uh, classic Duran Duran cover band, or what do you have? Tribute. 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 Yeah, never say cover. I, I should know that by now. He started playing piano at 14, so he's been playing for like four or five years now. Uh, after two years of classical training, he rebelled against it in favor of composing and improvising his own music. He is a rebel. Uh, in a style that he dubbed uh, Jassical Rock. His early influences included Keith Jarrett, uh, Keith Emerson, and Rick Wakeman. Love Rick Wakeman. Love the cape. He was a trendsetter. Um, Craig was always fascinated with the technical aspects of music and recording. At 15, he acquired his first four-track reel-to-reel -reel machine. Was it a TX? What did they call it? 33? That was one or, of those those tall ones. Yeah, with the big reel. Yeah, that was like I think it was a TX. Yeah, actually, yeah I had yeah. one of those at some point. Loved that thing. Sounded great, actually. Um, at 29, he earned his certificate of, uh, in recording and engineering technology from the Recording Institute of Detroit. 
And while there, he studied under Robert Dennis, who was George Clinton's favorite recording engineer. So there you go. Uh, since the age of 17, he's never been without a synth. Ah, oh, a boy in a synth. I love that. It's a touching story. Uh, he's never been without a synth. A recording... Uh, synth or recording yeah i messed that up anyway he's had recording and mixing gear for a really long time yeah. he owns avalon studio where he offers mixing and mastering services to up-and-coming artists he also creates backing tracks for other bands after three decades of composing and recording in genres such as rock synth pop industrial electronica craig currently composes instrumental music for a live project in a style that fuses psychedelic rock with elements of a world uh, of world and ambient slash techno I can't pronounce these Think names. Azric Tentacles meets Ulrich Schnauss. I'm sorry. I, I'll <laughs> never be able, I, even after watching the show over and over again, I'll never get that right. But you know, um, and, and I was seeing tentacles is another word, so I'm glad you clarified that. Some of his latest material can be found here at soundcloud.com slash Craig Robart. C-R-A-I-G-R-O-B-A-R-T. So there you have it. Um, I've got to ask you before we start, why did you want to be, because we had a bunch of people sent in, just like, I want to interview you. Well, no, we said, tell us why. And I can't remember now, but yours was the most compelling uh, paragraph or letter. Why did you want to interview me? You know, I think you you picked me because it, it sounded like the way I put it, you were going to be challenged or something. Um, I want to be. I, I hope that, you know, well, no, I hope that you ask me questions that unearth little things about Taxi that can help our members get forwarded more often and make better music and stuff that may not cross my mind on a weekly basis because I do this all the time and, and you could have a different perspective than I would. So hopefully you'll see stuff that I won't. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm, I think there are questions that people want answers to, you know, like... Do the screeners really listen to everything, or do you guys have monkeys sitting in a back room going forward, return, <laughs> forward, return? So, uh, okay, uh, now yeah. I've, I've watched a lot of episodes. But, yeah. Uh, not all of them. But you guys have covered a lot of stuff. I and know. I had a hard time coming up with some good <laughs> questions for you. How do you think I feel having to do this every week? Uh, that's <laughs> see, see, you're putting all the work on me today. I am. That's exactly <laughs> what this was, was a way for me to take the week off. Okay. <laughs> Of course, you're going to be doing most of the talking, too. That I can do. As long as I don't have to do the thinking, I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. i got to say, I had a pretty darn relaxing weekend because I didn't really have to do any prep work other than, you know, editing your bio a little bit and changing I to he and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually had like a normal person's weekend, largely because you're going to be interviewing me. So thank good. you for that. Good. <laughs> And you'll know all these answers just fine. I hope so. <laughs> It'll be a little embarrassing if I don't. But I really have never heard any of this stuff before. Just Is that so all you, you wanted to ask? Me? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I really should stick to my... Oh, oh, have you been to a road rally? I already know the answer, which is yes. Yeah. Um, and are you ready to go? Because I am, so let's have at it. Oh, I've been let's a member. <laughs> I've been a member. I'm on my third year. Oh, okay. How long have you been a member? There you go. Yeah. Apparently, you've got really good reading. Um, Those are big fonts, too. Yeah, 16 points, so I don't have to work too hard on the show. I can see them from a distance, although I don't really look at the sheet all that often. So when they said, when you said, you know, let's interview Michael, I thought, okay, well, is this interviewing Michael's, like, like him as the man, just you, your personality, your life and stuff? Or was I supposed to also ask about Taxi? So I Not just me, up, because I'm so iconic. I mean, I mean, there there's some things. I some people are laughing in the studio audience. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so you know, so so some. I mean, these are like standard questions too. And then there's a couple of there's a couple of weird ones. All but right. um, you want me to start? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Where were you born and raised? I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, um, and raised in a small farm town in central Illinois. Cool. Hey, I was born in Illinois. Really? Where? Yeah, uh, Greenville. Never heard of it. Gee, yeah. and I thought my town was small. Yeah, it was a small college town, you know? Yeah? yeah? Wow, you guys had a college. We didn't even have a high school. We didn't even have a grade school. I used to have to walk like 20 miles in my bare feet in the snow just to get an education. <laughs> it didn't pay off. No, I, I really right. did grow up in a small town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, it, you know, it was wholesome, and the people were nice, and... Uh, 
there are times that, you know, like if I'm walking down Sunset Boulevard, I really miss the wholesomeness of Illinois. Yeah. It's a good place. I like the country, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll vacillate. Once we're in the country, we want to move back to the city. Right. Back and forth. We're stuck in the city now. I'm happy as long as there's a movie theater with more than one screen and a Starbucks. I'm pretty good to go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in the music biz, yeah, you worked in studios before you started all this, right? I did. Were you doing that your whole life, or at what age did you start your studio engineering career? Well, what age? I was 19 years old. I believe it was 1974 or 1975, and. If anybody in the studio audience knows what my occupation was before, this is, I mean, the staff knows. My life is an open book. I love telling stories about my past. Um, it's a family trait. But do you know what I did, Bria, before I was in the music business? Like, before the aquarium thing? I can't believe you know that. Yeah, because you've told me about it. <laughs> I was I, uh, I was well it was kind of aquarium related I was a professional scuba diver for a company called Reef Incorporated based in Miami Florida and my job was collecting species of fish and teaching mostly Bahamians um, how to collect fish without injuring them so that they could then be shoved into plastic bags styrofoam containers and shipped all over the world whoa yeah weird yeah, it was um, it was a pretty awesome job because like two or three days a week I'd get to fly on a little pontoon plane from the back of the Miami Herald, where there's a like intercoastal waterway uh, there, and I would get to fly down to the Bahamas on this plane, sleep on the way down, um, and then teach Bahamians how to collect the fish, and then at the end of the day grab a lobster, cook it on a stick on the beach, and That's then fly cool. home. I was 19 That's years old. Cool. And then I stumbled into Criteria yeah. Studios and started my career in music. Where was that? Uh, in Miami. Oh, okay. So you answered my next question, which is, what did you do before that? Okay. I sold shoes, too, at some point. Okay. I yeah. worked at the Village Bootery, owned by Victor Mafood in Ken on Kendall Drive in South Miami, Florida. Yo, Victor. Okay. Now, did you get any formal training for the studio stuff? Not until I actually started in the studio. See, there's a question nobody's ever asked me. Um, I was with a roommate at Ace Music in Miami, which was kind of like a precursor to guitar, you know, modern day guitar center. It was the biggest music store in Miami. I overheard a delivery guy saying he was going to Criteria Studios to bring an ARP string ensemble to Stills. And I went, Stephen Stills? And he went, yeah. Can I go for a ride? No. <laughs> I begged, I pleaded, and he finally said, fine, just stay in the lobby, keep your mouth shut. And as soon as the owner of the company walked through and said, this place looks like hell, we need a new kid to sweep the floors, I jumped out of my chair, waved my arms, I got a job. So I had no training Good other time. than playing around with the TAC 4 track before that. And right after I started, about a week after I started, a guy who went on to be the Bee Gees co-producer named Carl Richardson, yo Carl, he watches the show every now and then, um, Carl was teaching a class for the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, mm -hmm. called Basic Recording Techniques, using a book by Robert Runstein, if I remember that far back. So I got to take that class for free because I worked at the studio so it was awesome. By day, I was sweeping floors and doing pizza runs, and at night, I was learning how to place microphones. Cool. That was my formal training. Oh! And learning on the job. I was. And um, I was also in college at the University of Miami, and I was a business major with a minor in music and taking audio recording in college, and it was one of the first programs anywhere in the world to teach can you, that. Can you read my questions? No, that was, that I'm was, sorry. That was next. That was next. <laughs> sorry. I've been looking over that I can't read sideways or, or upside down. I'm sorry. All right, here's, okay, now here, here should be an easy one. Okay. Why did you start Taxi? Um, it seemed because I'd been around musicians for so many years and they all had the same problem, which was, I've made this music, now what? And I had the idea because 
AOL and CompuServe were kind of new things, and I saw them. I joined AOL back when you put your phone in a modem cradle. Oh, yeah. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if somebody created a network where musicians could send their music to the industry? <laughs> and the funny thing was, I invited some friends over. Uh, that was forward thinking. I guess. I mean, to me, it just seemed practical. Yeah. But Using technology. Yeah, because, you know, it, it, I mean, CompuServe and AOL, AOL only had 100,000 members at the time. But uh, remember they were giving out those discs everywhere you went, oh, yeah. free AOL discs. CDs. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think at one point even three and a half inch floppies. Um, anyway, so Rob Shirelli I think was one of the people, a friend of mine named Robert Cordy, maybe an A&R person, can't remember his name now, or two, and invited them over. I I want to say for like a Monday night football game or something, and there was pizza involved and beer, and I said, so now that we're on a break, like halftime or something, I want to run this awesome idea I have by you. And I got a lot of this, mm -hmm. this stoic, mm -hmm. stone face. And I could see that they were thinking, it's not terrible, but there was something missing. What it was missing was they didn't want to get a bunch of music coming down a wire to them that hadn't been filtered. That was the thing that I didn't write in the, the initial business plan. What do you mean filtered? Um, no screeners. For... My initial idea was you oh, guys tell me what you're looking for and then I'll put it out there like a tip sheet to all these musicians who are in need of somebody to send their music to and they all had this just like stone face look and I because they're already getting a whole bunch of right. submissions on tape and whatever not and you yeah. don't want to slam them with right. a lot of, okay yeah they don't want unfiltered stuff they wanted stuff that was like cream of the crop right. and they're already working with you know like a level songwriters so uh, I think it was still during that initial like five or ten minutes that meeting I said well what about if I hire some out of work a and r people to pre-screen it because this is yeah Los Angeles has a lot of those um, and I could see the wheels spinning these guys showing me we got pages of questions okay so the wheels were spinning and uh, and they couldn't come up with a note they couldn't say no that doesn't work because it's like gee our friends and co-workers that have unfortunately lost their jobs are gonna be pre-screening okay and that was really the the birth of the company cool yeah cool and I'm sure it uh, took a while to build all that up to where it is today. No, it was great, awesome, just wonderful right from the get-go. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling, I'm sure, and all that stuff. Yeah it, yeah, it it took a million. Back then, people actually used telephones with wires, and it took a million phone calls. It wow. was phone calls all day, every day. Would you listen to music if we pre-screened it? Well, who's going to listen? I have to go down my list. This guy, that guy. Really? Ah, He's going to do it. Okay. Yeah. And they've heard they heard some of the names you mean. Yeah. They've only heard some cast cool. Yeah, they probably worked with them at some point. I'll bet you there's a whole little uh, biography you could write about this, you know, or someone could about your your life and starting Taxi and everything else. So. It would only be interesting to my family members. I have a feeling, but you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? I don't know. All right, here it is. Speaking of the business, well, you really worked hard on this. Thank you. And this and is this is and this is like the day when I got the email from Bria saying you got the job, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good job on that, Craig. So, of course, where was my mind going to do after getting that email? Just. So it was just going to start. I, I would have waited until right? the last minute. I would have written them on the freeway on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, which of your day-to-day -day tasks here? takes up most of your time what task um, probably working on industry contacts and helping the A&R team with proofing and editing the listings so you have we, a big hand in that then yeah uh, yeah I hope to not have a hand in it someday um, for instance, that $25,000 listing that just went out, that was probably three or four hours of work on their part before it got to me. I wasn't all that happy. It, they didn't do a bad job writing it, but it, it didn't have 
a certain flow to it that made it crystal clear. There was nothing you mm. couldn't. That, this is the problem: is you couldn't really fault anything with it. But I wanted it to be better because that's just the way we are as a company. So I spent about two hours on it, then sent it back to them. They gave a little more feedback, and then finally it went out. But it, it was a big process for. Well, one it sounds like an important one too. So yeah, you know, because we want you guys <laughs> to be able to understand it. And we're writing to different levels of sophistication. Some members are newbies, some are mid-level, some are very experienced. Oh, so you have to lay it out, yeah, for some. Yeah. And without being, you know, uh, patronizing or insulting. And at the same time, we're also writing for our screeners because they have to look at it like you guys look right. at it so that they are judging on the same level that you're submitting. Right. Okay, got that one. Besides planning for that massive road rally, <laughs> Do you have any major projects you're working on for Taxi right now? Well, Craig, glad you asked because just before you got here, I'll be right back. Okay. It's <laughs> literally two minutes before you got here, I was tidying up the couch so that the studio audience would have a place to sit. <laughs> Hi, Dave. We have a studio audience of one. Um, which I can't show this because there's bound to be some confidential stuff on there, but look at this. Uh, yeah, I won't look. <laughs> Projects Q1 2018. So this is just stuff that only Bria and I are working on. This is largely marketing or media related. And um, one of the, well, I can tell you the first thing on the list is talking to Wirecast about being able to play music live through a wire instead of through the speakers on the show, being able to do a split screen with remote guests, excuse me, um, oh, and solving the CPU fan problem, which Bria did all by her lonesome last week. <laughs> is that that noise I heard at first? Um, anyway, so yeah, the, uh, we always have big projects, and believe it or not, okay. I have already officially started working on the 2018 Road Rally. Yeah, I'll bet. Nine months to go, and I'm working on it already. Because it's huge, man. I don't know how you do it, you know? Sheer willpower. I mean, yeah, you got, I mean, you have a team that helps. Um, largely, That's honestly, so it's mostly um, Angel and myself up to a point, then Bria and my wife start getting involved in the last... 30, 60 days right uh, up? Like three, a few months. Um, doing outbound phone calls and things like that. But as far as like, I've already started a list of panels, started making a list of panelists, started <clears throat> working on sponsors. Um, Angel works on all the classes, all the one-to-one -one mentors, all that kind of stuff. So when uh, you've done so many of them, it's like, you got a process, so it's every it, it's year you do the not same quite kind this, of process. It's really not. No. No, because we're always trying to improve it, you know. And, and depending on who's on staff, you know, sometimes we have staff members that don't have skill sets that lend themselves well to the road rally. Sometimes we do. And, and Bria came back. She was a taxi member that was moving to L.A., and I wouldn't hire her because I knew her as a member and her dad and I have become friendly over the years. I said, but you know what? We need somebody to help us out with phone calls on the outbound side. So that's like a temp job. So that way I'll never have to fire you. You'll never okay, have to quit. And she hit it out of the park and here she is, the uh, producer of this fine project. And yeah, she, she is worth her weight in gold. I'm yes, sure. she yeah. is. How much do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> the look on her face is just priceless. She knows I'm kidding. <laughs> Does uh, but, you know nowadays I'd probably get sued for saying that, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm keeping it moving here. But. Good job. I'll, I'll probably you know, we we actually could have run out of questions. We still have an hour and six minutes. We're good. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Does Taxi's membership continue to rise? Does it stay the same, or is it decreasing? It fluctuates. It decreased in 2009 or 10 when we had the economic meltdown oh, yeah, right, yeah. Um, and stayed down for a number of years but frankly we were also over what I always felt comfortable with I mean in some of our literature somewhere I even said 10,000 members you know we cap it at 10k and frankly we hit the 10k mark and it kept going up but 
I kept a close eye on it, and the minute that I had felt that the quality of the screening or our ability to handle that level of membership, I would have capped it, um, and then the economy went in the dumper, so it went down anyway, and now it's on the way back up again. You have a capping level? We did. Well, in my yeah. mind, I did the math and figured, okay, this is about the number of man hours per staff member that we use per member. Uh, so I was able to extrapolate that and go, okay, you know, with the staff of this number of people, which I felt like was a manageable number, that we could handle this many members. To me, quality was always more important than quantity. Good. Yeah. Wasn't, Very good. Wasn't, I mean, I like money as much as the next guy, and I like to feed my family and have a roof over our heads, but... So how's it doing right now, the membership? It's going back up again. The economy... Oh, you mean it's been steadily climbing since yeah. then? Yeah. Yeah. The... Um, and up at, hey, how did the stock market do? <laughs> I mean, oh, <laughs> I uh, last week was exciting. But yeah, yeah. I would say, um, especially the last six months, um, put it this way, we just had our best weekend from a new member perspective and submission levels, all that stuff. This past weekend was our best in years. Busy, busy, huh? Yeah. Good. Which was awesome because I didn't work this weekend. <laughs> Other than checking by the hour, how many new members? So okay, so so okay, so generally, all right. So so you've been doing this a long time now. Like okay, so like over the last five years or something. Like how, is, does it stay the same? No, it goes up the and down. Membership, it goes up and down. We have skinny yeah. months, and some of it, it fluctuates due to like February is a short month. Um, months with multiple holidays or like you know Thanksgiving. And the Friday after Thanksgiving is off. People We're talking are, about the number of members yeah, goes who up. sign up. and we, we have actually done... I used to have a kid that worked here. I um, can't remember his name. He actually left taxi and went to work as an, became an FBI agent. Um, I think his name was James Comey. <laughs> 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 anyway, he did legitimately become an FBI agent. Yeah. Somebody from the FBI came and interviewed me about him before they, you know, they do all this stuff before they hire somebody but that kid was really sharp and he actually did a study that proved that our day-to-day -day membership signups were affected by the stock market wow. when the stock market was peaking membership would go up when the stock market and, and i mean literally tracking it on a day-by-day -day basis it was affected that much i think you kind of answered this next one or we might i, I, I don't know so on the other side of the coin, how's the quality and quantity of client requests been lately? Better than ever by far. Yeah, good. Um, it seems like that. It seems like there was like a weak point uh, uh, six months ago or something. Or? I don't remember that one. I can tell you that somewhere around 2014 or 2015 that I wasn't happy with the listings. Sometimes we get into a rut where it's the same companies over and over that keep knocking on our door saying, find me more, find me more. A lot of times it's libraries that are kind of like a, we've realized our catalog is a little long in the tooth and we want to freshen it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's very um, easy to just keep, uh, we don't want to say no to them, we'll be taking you know opportunities away from our members. But at the same time, I'm sure the members look at it and go, oh, I've seen a lot of listings that look like that one. Well, the company is trying to rebuild an entire catalog. So what we've been doing this year, uh, well, for the last year, uh, is really pushing hard to bring in new catalogs or new companies, libraries in particular. Right now, we're on a little quest to bring in more companies from Europe and Asia. We want to, um, instead of opportunities with companies we've been working with for a long time, we're working on bringing in opportunities from companies that our members don't even know exist. Fresh. It's been looking good lately. Thanks. Yeah, been looking good. It's uh, about to start looking even better. Did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> good. <laughs> it's true. Okay, um, if you were stranded on an island with a solar-powered iPod, which artists wouldn't you mind hearing over and over and over again? I know everybody, pro anybody who knows me probably thinks the Beatles, but no. Um, I've been listening to them for so long that sometimes I feel like I've heard them too much. Um, 
Steely Dan. Duh. Good one. Good one. Um, yeah. Little known fact, uh, the song Asia by Steely Dan lasts from the moment I hit the on-ramp to get on the freeway till the minute that I get off the off-ramp off here by the office. That's exactly Asia. <laughs> it lasts that long. Huh. Um, which well. means I have a pretty short commute by L.A. standards. Um I always hear new stuff in everything they do, and the playing is just so incredibly superb. I still don't understand a single one of their lyrics, but the nuance, the feel, the... I mean, things like the drag of a drumstick, the drum, the drumstick on a snare drum, moving that extra little inch as Bernard Purdy does what Bernard Purdy does so well. To me, that's art there's a beauty it's like looking at a fine oil painting just to hear those subtle little things that only somebody who's a real like production nerd would listen for well mastered album yeah just so clean yeah a couple of a couple of episodes ago you said you really liked uh that stevie wonder album mm. It was like I mean, no. Who wouldn't like Stevie uh, Wonder? I forgot. Maybe you're talking about the. I think Rob's working with it. I can't talk about that. Oh. You mentioned two. You mentioned two groups that you said the. Uh, it was so clean and I forget. Someone else probably remembers. Are they talking about it? Steely Dan. Mojo no. will. Mojo <laughs> remembers everything. He's got a, a mind like a steel trap. That guy. Um. Did you have any other in mind? Other artists that you just um, have? Uh, anybody who knows me well knows that I love everything that the Eagles have ever done. Um, I don't know. The, I have a, a broad range of stuff that I listen to, frankly, but the stuff that I'd never grow tired of would probably be Steely Dan and the Eagles, and to some extent the Beatles. Um, Okay. But more modern stuff is what I force myself to listen to to try and stay current. But at my age and with the short commute, I don't accomplish that goal as much as I'd like to. So much good music these days. Yeah, so probably, you know, so much. for as much homogenized kind of beat-driven crap uh, that you hear on the radio, all you have to do is look slightly below the surface. Yeah. There's some incredibly talented artists. <laughs> you already there. answered my one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do I think there's crap on the radio? Yes. <laughs> okay, what do you do to promote Taxi so that you bring in more clients' requests, listings? What do you do to promote um, your, your company? This is an ongoing battle, and I'm, I'm going to be really honest because I told you I would be. The stink of some of the other companies that have tried to emulate Taxi over the years. Uh, anybody, you ask anybody who's ever worked here, even people that left here hating my guts personally, none of them would ever be able to say they've done one tiny little thing wrong. You know, we don't make stuff up. There are no gray areas. The first thing people are told when they start working here, literally the first day they come down here, they sit in a chair and I say, always do the right thing. And if you know, don't know what the right thing is, come and see me and I'll tell you what the right thing is. So integrity. Yeah, we're big on integrity. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it really, really bothers me that there are companies out there that went, oh, that guy must be making a ton of money. I'm going to roll something out that's kind of like that. And they don't do it with integrity. And they cut a lot of corners. Frankly, we have seen, I've got on this computer that you and I are staring at right now, I've got taxi listings that I've pulled off of other websites where they took our listings and filled in, changed the genres, wow. and only slightly modified them and put them up on their website going, come on, send in submission fees and submit your music to this. Mm -hmm. They don't know who we're running the listing for. So mm -hmm. it's clearly they're just taking the submission fees and ripping people off. Um, mm -hmm. There's another company that people get deals through, but yet nobody's ever signed a license agreement and the check come from the company so it's more than a little suspicious there are all kinds of levels of this going on and it's been going on for many of the years that we've been in business and that bothers me that they've created kind of a stench of so-called pay-for-play companies so it's tough sometimes when I reach out to somebody in the industry and they take the call 
Or sometimes I've gone to lunches okay, with Okay, so people. you're actually cold calling industry people? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. I was the question. Was yeah, that. and I know it's a long way to get there, but it's not <laughs> as easy as just picking up the phone going, hey, it's Michael Lasko from Taxi. Virtually all of them know the company. Uh, it, I can't think of three times in 20 years where somebody said, what? Taxi, huh? Um, but you can kind of hear it in the voices of some of them where they're like, uh, and I go, what, you're bothered by the fact that we charge musicians that we're a pay-for-play company? Well, yeah. And, I, and I'll say to them, uh, do you pay your accountant to provide the service that he or she provides? Well, yeah, but that's an accountant. Uh, do you pay the person who cuts your lawn? Well, yeah. So we're providing a service, and we offer a 100% money-back guarantee that lasts for a full year. That's true. You can't lose. And before you know it, uh, got to tell you, the music supervisor that laid five new listings on me this morning, I had breakfast with him, and I could see it in his eyes. And I asked him, he goes, yeah, you're right. I, he said, this meal for me is deciding whether or not I want to be affiliated with your company or not. Hmm. And now he loves us. Hmm. Loves us. Yeah. Cool. And you know why? Integrity. He actually sent me an email <clears throat> saying, I've never seen a company in so many words with this much integrity. I did quite a bit of research before signing on with you guys, and I was hard pressed to find anything negative. Oh, there's a ton of negative stuff no, out there. It's not real. Yeah, but they were. <laughs> but, but people responded to their negativity with with facts yeah. about it. Oh you gosh, know, like facts. Shot Ooh, them, shot I hate out. facts. Yeah. <laughs> and then the people that I feel always feel bad for the people that respond with facts, that then the other less than nice people in the comment areas will um, then say, "Oh, you're probably that taxi dude signed up under some fake name." Right. I mean, seriously. That's a people thing, but whatever. Okay, good work, good work, good good answer. So we're gonna save this one for last. Okay, it says last right now. It does, one. doesn't it? <laughs> you, we, you we can actually ask it now, it doesn't matter so I don't forget. We all know you love your job and probably never wanna retire, but have you given any thoughts to how taxi may continue into the future once you do retire? Yeah, I think about retirement all the time. I've been thinking about retirement since the day I started the company. <laughs> um, and retirement is different things for different people, obviously. I don't know that I'll ever quit working. But yeah, um, I wouldn't want anybody to ever take this company over that like, I couldn't sell it to any of our competitors because they wouldn't run it with integrity. Mm, right. um, so yeah, I think about it. Do you children want to do it or maybe some... No, nah, one of my daughters to... was interested in it, but um, she's not anymore. Would, and... you, would you sell it? Um, or something like that? Only to the right buyer. I wouldn't want to close it, but I wouldn't want to sell it. You know what? Um, Tony Van Veen, who is the CEO of the parent company that owns CD Baby and Disc Makers, was, was started out as a low-level guy. First job, I think, out of college at Disc Makers. Worked his way up to like vice president, then president, and he engineered the purchase of CD Baby. And he's a close friend of mine, and Derek Sivers is a good friend of mine. And so I watched that whole thing happen and really liked the dynamic of the fact that people thought that, ooh, Disc Makers is going to buy CD Baby and turn it into a steaming pile of crap, and they didn't. Mm. Um, you know, they're varying opinions, but I would say that the majority of people think that the, the torch was carried well. And because I know Van Veen and know the kind of guy he is, that doesn't surprise me. So, yeah, it, for the day, when the day comes, because I'm not going to work here until the day I drop dead, but, you know, when the day comes, I want it to go to people that will care about. So you've had thoughts. You've, Who wouldn't? You've had thoughts, yeah, about, yeah. Cause yeah. You, yeah, you're not going to live forever and, what, you know. I'm not. <laughs> no, I, you know, honestly. Rockstar may help. <laughs> I've cheated. I've, my family has been more than patient, but I've cheated them out of a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. A lot. We've never been on a vacation where I wasn't working four hours a day. And it really gets to me when I'm sitting in a hotel room and my wife and kids are on a mountain skiing. And well, I'm maybe you should train a replacement and get the hell out of here. Um, I've tried. Still own it. Or whatever. Yeah, I've tried. Yeah. Um, anyway. Okay, cool. Was, was that a toffee? Not too bad? No. All right. Made you think, huh? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you smell smoke? No. It, it, it's something I think about all the time because it really means a lot to me that the company would be carried on with the same level of integrity that I try to run it with. And 
I, I'm sure I could find a buyer and I could just walk away and go, screw you guys. True, you could, it's yeah. Not, not my yeah. nature to do that. that. That wouldn't be cool if it wasn't the right guy. You're right. Yeah. Although there are days. <laughs> And you know who you are. So we've covered we you you've covered this particular question, maybe maybe too much, and I shouldn't ask it because you have a lot of technical guys on here. You've got um, you've you've had supervisors on here, and uh, you know engineers and um, screeners. S screeners, we get the, a, a good information from them, and see, and you have all this information. Now yourself that you're always giving us uh, when questions come up here yeah. and you know from people so you may have asked this before and you may not have to go hog wild on it what one single thing or action should a member do that would contribute to his or her success as a financially successful music creator for film and TV um or your top yeah they're gonna be a couple of there's gonna be a couple I'll times. try and keep it concise though um, there's a lot of bad information out there um, a lot of people love to talk a good game and a lot of musicians have have absorbed a lot of bad information mostly from a bunch of sour pusses that have been failures at it and they love to say, oh that, yeah they're gonna screw you I would never give up my publishing <sighs> Um, I've heard that. Yeah. So number one is don't believe the sour pusses. <laughs> okay, and got underlined sour pusses. Um, number two is understand that on the TV side, especially the instrumental side of TV music, and I'm not talking about scoring a, a dramatic, uh, episodic dramatic thing where you're actually doing the score. But incidental music, cues uh, that you would hear in reality shows, they are not looking for the most brilliant composer. They're looking for people who understand how they need to use music and what the music's job is, which is to bolster and enhance an emotion. Um, so those are the two things. Is don't believe everything you hear because the vast majority of it is just not true. Um, and then you need to watch a lot of TV. Figure out what it is that you do well. What kind of show is using a lot of what you do well? Let's say you're doing EDM. Um, watch Dance Moms or shows, any of the runway modely shows that tend to use a lot of beat-driven EDM-like stuff. And watch that stuff and go, oh, here's what all those things have in common. It's, it's generally this range of tempos. It's generally uplifting or it generally sounds a little um, quirky and mischievous and you'll start to see patterns and go I, I can do that and then just do it a lot of people think about it and not do it that, that, that that's pretty smart I, I I do watch my share of TV more than I should where I should be in the studio more um, one thing one thing I learned somewhere is that you can um, write off Netflix Hulu and all that if you're writing off your stuff for taxes yeah you know, as long as cable I think the rule of thumb is that you have to earn a, you know a certain amount of money I'm not an accountant well it may take a couple of years uh, yeah they, uh, they, they, they're not, they don't look at you for a few years a lot of years like I have losses every year <laughs> really how do you look in stripes <laughs> sooner or later you're going to jail dude. Uh, they they only let you deduct stuff for a while I mean you've got to have a That's legitimate business and the proof of legitimacy is is their income well I'm bringing in, I'm it? bringing income in because oh, okay. I lump more than one business together got it okay all right, all right. okay good suggestions um, you already answered this one what do you honestly think about the current quality and vibe of contemporary pop okay um, isn't there a, a lack of musicianship and virtuosity in today's popular music in contrast to what we grew up with? Yes. It's all in the same Largely, vein. but not entirely. Like I said before, I do find stuff, um, got to go looking for a little bit, but there is stuff out there that to me is like, wow, I always say that's as good as the stuff I grew up on. Um, but it's sometimes not, it's better. But it's not popular like... Uh, right? But it's pop e in that it's got hooks and okay, it's there's... memorable. It's not like far-fetched weirdo outsidey music. It's mainstream, 
but really well crafted. Uh, it's just most of what makes it to radio is done with computers and sounds pretty homogenized. For the masses. But that's yeah. okay. The, you that's know what? Okay. That's the masses yeah. vote with their attention and their dollars. Um, the radio stations, people want to believe that the industry is forcing music upon people. All this other stuff is out there on Spotify and a million other places, and they can certainly subscribe to music blogs and find out about all kinds of independent stuff that pushes the envelope. But most people gravitate to what's easy. They don't want to have to work to consume music, and I get that. Same thing when we watch movies or TV shows. If it doesn't follow a, you know, a storyline that's got a beginning and a middle and an end, it won't keep our attention. So commercial, okay. I get it. Yeah. I may not always I, like I, it, but I get it. I get it, too. And that's, what we, that's why we're here to learn to provide... Yeah, to that industry too. And you can still do the that. artsy fartsy stuff, you know, do the 9 to 5 thing. It beats working is no no offense to any baristas because I love some baristas that I've met, but would you rather be a barista or would you rather be, you know, digging ditches or would you rather be creating music for your 9 to 5 job and then you can then still you... create art at night. Yeah. And you know what? You'll create better art because you've gotten faster and better by doing it routinely for doing instrumental cues by day. Cool. Good one. Do you find any time to do any hobbies or creative pursuits? Not enough, but I do. Okay. What would those be? I know you've played uh, golf, right? I don't golf very often. Um, I enjoy golf, but I'm not somebody who's obsessed with it like most of my golfer friends. Um, Ralph Murphy is a very, very dear friend of mine, um, mm -hmm. lives in Nashville. Whenever he comes to L.A., he stays at our house, and we go out and golf a couple of days. There are years where he's my only golf partner. I'll play two days. Last time I was Ralph Murphy, myself, Paul Williams. The Paul Williams. The Paul Williams okay, right, yeah. and my friend Hookman, who's a songwriter. The four of us went out and uh, played one day. Just had the best time. I loved those days of golf. I'm an avid saltwater fisherman, but I don't like going out like on a 60-foot boat with a fighting chair and big tackle. Um, I, I'm graduated past that. I am now a, a fishing snob that likes to go out on a small boat with light tackle for big ass fish, okay. like a hundred pound tarpon in the Florida Keys on ten pound test and a whippy little rod. That's you, my idea. That's your thing, huh? That's my thing. Okay. Well, okay. Well, uh, what kind of movies do you like? Like I like horror. Um, the Walking Dead. I'm that kind of guy. Um. CIA suspense stuff is always fun to watch. Um. I, I'm. Really dumb comedies. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dumb my, comedies. Yeah, my wife and I love a good dumb comedy. Yeah, I um, put up but, with my wife. Like that, but yeah. I can't say that, you know, it, it's limited to a certain genre. I mean, I'll, I'll watch a documentary. I, I saw a documentary two years ago about the start of the Israeli Air Force when they were flying Piper Cubs. It was fascinating. Steven Spielberg's sister produced that movie. Hmm. Mind-blowingly fascinating. I like war stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going to ask you a series of or questions. Answer with your preference. Okay. You Thought, mean like motorboat or or? Stuff <laughs> like that, like red or blue, <laughs> okay. which is your favorite or something? Okay, dogs or cats? Uh, dogs. But currently own a cat, not a dog. <laughs> <laughs> pie or cake? Um, pie. <laughs> Steak or sushi? Steak with sushi, sushi on top. Oh, good. I love them both. Those are my, probably my two favorite foods. John or Paul? Um, Paul. Okay. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Um, Beatles, generally speaking, Rolling Stones in the car with the window rolled down. Ah. Get your yayas out. Greatest live album ever. Uh, the beach or hiking in the mountains? Mountains. Gotcha. Angelina or Jennifer? Jennifer. <laughs> Beer or wine? Neither. I don't really enjoy drinking. Oh, okay. I get a headache. Um, I'm a cheap date because even since college, I mean, it was always frustrating when everybody else was getting drunk. Um, I can have a quarter of a beer and get a headache. Okay, so how about, how about when you were younger? 
Uh, even then, I'm, I'm telling you, alcohol just doesn't okay. agree with me. I get All a right. headache and I feel like crap, so why bother? See, now we know Michael better. Yeah. Okay. Get, um, don't send me wine for the holidays because I'll probably give it away. Night owl or early bird? Both, sadly. Um, yeah. I generally end up going to bed between midnight and 1.30 a.m. And during the week, I get up at 6 a.m. Uh, and on the weekends, sadly, like 7, 7.30 keeping the same schedule sort of sort of yeah yeah phone call or text phone call bath or shower shower mac or pc <laughs> mac <laughs> do i look like a pc guy? so i shouldn't ask <laughs> ios or android <laughs> um no actually you should believe it or not i i own apple stock my first computer for actually i should my yeah the first computer for taxi was a macintosh 2ci um, that cost thirty-seven hundred dollars. But what kind of phone do I have in my pocket? Android. There you go. Yeah, I like Android. Yeah, I'm. I, you know, I've got to say, the last two phones I've had, I've had them one of them for six years, and this one I've had for three years, and it's fine. Quite the uh, the debate on these on these two too, huh? Um, last one for this section: toilet paper over or under. Um, I, it's so funny that you asked that. I, was, I thought you were going to ask if I use it. Yes, I do. Um, but, you know, i got to say, one day I was talking to the lady that cuts my hair, and she said, we don't use toilet paper at our house. And I went, what do you use, your hand? She goes, no, we use wet wipes or wet ones or something. Oh, it's yeah, like, I didn't yeah, even know yeah. that was a thing. Um, anyway, uh, over or under? I'm definitely an over, and my wife is an under. And it's hmm. a bone of contention around hmm. Alaska household. Hmm. I, see, I think most people are over. <laughs> yeah, you know what? In the middle of the night, it's just easier to do that than... Okay, yeah. right on, right on. Question from Australia. Okay. Because I asked for questions. Oh, from other form. members. Cool. Yeah. And I only got one, by the way, from all your constituency. <laughs> okay, for members... Because to... you know me so well. <laughs> My life is an open book now. Okay, so... I'm Okay, this guy is probably asking this for a ton of people okay because there are members who are unable to attend the road rally um, he just wants you to set up a simple video camera for one or two key panels in the ballroom and then you know have a, a private link to it for members later so they can watch some great video of, of what's going on the answer is no i won't say that it will stay no forever but it probably will sadly and i've got several reasons for that number one is we're a tiny little mom and pop company i know you guys think that we're some giant corporation in a high rise with hundreds of staff members but we're usually like a staff of nine ten eleven people um and putting on the road rally takes so much work um, I mean frankly I don't even know what the staff does once we hit the ground there and I'm in the ballroom the whole time they're out there making problems go away pretty much from like 6 30 or 7 o'clock in the morning until midnight by adding video it's one more thing to go wrong oh here there's another reason okay. um, you literally you can't just put up a camera on talking heads from you know 20 feet out from the panel right first, first of all you can microphone right i mean yeah. we could take a feed. everybody's got a suggestion and we'll feeds. take a feed off the console we can it's sure complicated. there are it's just more stuff yeah. to babysit and believe me we don't need any more stuff to babysit but there's a bigger reason and it's selfish on my part and that is i want people to come to the road rally because it's not just the quality of the information this, this might sell it though putting uh, a video no it won't uh, here's why i can say that with, with almost absolute certitude um and i gotta make a note uh um okay if people know there's a way to consume the information at the road rally without getting off their butt they'll take the easy way out mm -hmm. and when they take the easy way out and they stay home and they go, oh, just watch a few of the panels online why not Lasco they're streaming now you can do it look you're doing a show uh, that's all true but this is easy compared relatively compared easy to... but there's stuff that can go wrong here you know and if it does and Bria's not sitting over there you know it, it's hard for me to 
be the person normally doing the interview or dispensing the information and being the tech guy that if we have a problem, I might have to click on something or involved with music coming in some other way other than speakers. Just the more things there are to remember, there's more stuff that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, my gears in the studio, it's second nature for me to hit buttons and fix stuff, but I can't be this personality and do it at the same time. But getting back to the road rally is the best part of the road rally is the community. That's right. And you're not going to get the community over a wire, this although guy, the guys in the this chat guy, room are. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy asking for it wants to go bad, I'm sure. Um, but, what do you, but dude, if you're watching this from Australia, what are you going to get out of... I mean, the panels are long, and the information is... It's not really concise. I mean, you have to watch a long time. You're getting a lot out of it. And everybody's there. going to get something differently as well. You might have one thing that pops out for you on a panel, and the guy sitting next to you might be interested in something totally yeah. different. So it was a good question. He just yeah. wanted to know, uh, you know, how how hard it would be if it would be possible at all. So it, it's possible. I just there's part of me that just doesn't want to do it because you know what? Go to taxi dot or forums with an S forums dot taxi dot com and look at success stories the, th the thread starter success stories and what you're gonna see there will amaze you I would say probably 30 or 40 percent of the success stories that are on there are people that say I met somebody at the bar at the road rally or I made a collaborator friend another member at the road rally and that resulted in us getting something in a TV show or <laughs> um, my one-to-one -one mentor Thing, which is free at the Road Rally, not at other conventions. They charge you for that after you pay 375 bucks for a ticket. Mm -hmm. okay. 375 bucks for a ticket, and if you want a mentor, that's another like 35 bucks or something. Um, but it's free at the Taxi Road Rally, yes. November 1st through the 4th. That's, a, that's an unbelievable value, man. I mean, that's the membership cost right. alone. Right. You could buy two tickets to another large-scale convention. It's also a quality deal. It's different, but it's quality. Yeah. Um, and two tickets to that would cost you 750 bucks, or you could be a taxi member for 300 bucks a year and get two tickets. So the thing is, even though, yeah, I could, I could webcast a panel or two or a bunch of them. Um, they wouldn't look great because it might not be lit for broadcast. And um, Audio, we, yeah, I mean, we know. once priced out to do it right would cost about 10k a day to have. Oh, you did. Yeah, you to priced have, it out to have the right cameras with the right lenses and the right guys on those cameras and a video mm. switcher. All right. I mean, all of a sudden all you're right. into TV production, and then, and, yeah. and then you're into putting it up online and how to link it, and there's web design or, or whatever you got to do after that. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what the hotel charges for a, a stupid. Um, uh, extension what? cord okay. yeah, oh, oh an electrical outlet I mean we pay some ridiculous amount of money like I want to say $800 a day just for the power that goes to the PA system in the ballroom yikes it's like 856 bucks a day I think just for that electrical drop for the PA system well, they love you coming back year after year because you can okay um, okay so that's it for that one because you'd have to hire people, and it just cost. It would be like, and more, yeah, what are we gonna? It's just not a cool, I effective thing to look I at. I could do it. Um, I'd probably have to start charging for the road rally to offset the cost. Because you know, we don't make any money on the rally. There are years where my, I famously, I think it's 2014. I had to write a check for 25k when the road rally was over to make up the shortfall between what we brought in sponsor-wise and what we laid out. For all the stuff. I mean, normally it's, you know, we make a couple grand or lose a couple grand. It's pretty much a wash. Okay. Um, but if you start adding, you know, 10K a day for video production, I mean, you need at least three cameras. You need a, a technical director. What you need? So you're paying for a second. Okay, keep going. Uh, you need a technical director to call shots, you know, uh, give me a two shot, give me a one shot on that panel, it's switching back and forth. It's not as easy as just putting up a webcam and letting it run. Agreed that stuff has gotten better and easier. Um, oh, we could use Ustream to broadcast it. Everybody who's a taxi TV regular would know better. Is that appropriate? 
I can't read you right. I went to you. Oh, you um, I, I told you I'd answer anything. What do we pay the speakers? Um, and the speakers in the classrooms? Um, oh, yeah, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Um, the question is, what do we pay the panelists and the you know the panelists and the teachers? There are a few exceptions. Um, if there has been a particularly hard kind of person to get on the stage because they're just unavailable a lot. Um, there are times that I'll call somebody and say, you know, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks if you can give me 90 minutes of your time on Sunday. And that way I can just lock him in and because I spend... And a, he's probably worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely worth it. But I spend a ridiculous amount of time reaching out to these people. And because the vast, vast majority of them are volunteers who are trying to give something back to the community or their friends of mine or friends of the company for whatever their motivation is. I remember calling, I won't mention the name, but a really big time music supervisor with a brand name. And I called her, I think it was for the 2016 road. <laughs> I called her five or 10 minutes before the panel and said, uh, you're in the hotel, right? And you're trying to work your way from the lobby to the ballroom. She goes, oh shit. I mean, and, uh, <laughs> oh crap. Um, I totally forgot. And I'm over, uh, I'm on a lot, you know, in Culver City right now. And, and so yeah. you just never know what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, so no one, no, no, yeah. So everybody donates their time then. Yeah. Oh, not a hundred percent, but like 90, yeah. 98.5%. That's cool. Maybe even 99%. That's cool. Cause I, we get so much out of it. I love Ronan's class. Um, so many good guys there. Yeah. You can't go Ralph, Murphy, you can't get going through it all. All right, so you Australian guys, you're just going to have to try harder. I'm sorry. Uh, save up for it. Uh, <laughs> um, I have an extra bedroom sometimes. No. What is the average number of live taxi TV viewers anyway? Um, it's now rising again towards the end of our time with Ustream. If the numbers were going down because the connectivity was so bad. Um, now it's probably around 125 and seems to be growing every week. Oh, okay. Yeah. 125. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, average, huh? Yeah. I mean, we've had, you know, for some of the shows, like the time I had Cara Diaguardi on the show, we probably had 300 people live. But you got to remember that um, people in Europe, um, you know, it's 1 o'clock in the morning for them or whatever it is. Um, people in the Middle East or Asia, it's just not in their time zone. Right. And frankly, for people in America, we do it at, you know, 4 o'clock on a Monday, but that's um, 6 o'clock in Chicago, 7 o'clock in the East Coast. So people are going, eh, I'm eating dinner with my family. I'll watch the, the archive later. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Anyway, you'll miss the camaraderie on the screen but thanks for keeping the archive there that's that that's awesome yeah and we now get usually within a week of the show airing somewhere around 600 to 900 views just in that week following oh, i wondered so, about that yeah 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 that's cool um <clears throat> okay so there's a listing up right now <laughs> Now, this is the last question I have, unless I come up with some more. Maybe, maybe well, you some better, other. because we've got 27 minutes left. Maybe, okay, maybe some other people. I know one person had a question. I, I remembered it. I can tell you after my last one here. Okay, so there's, there's oh, a listing. I, I wrote down... Oh, I wrote down... Uh, I want to go back to the road rally. The Australian person wanted to know. Okay, yeah, yeah, I I, I've told this story before in Taxi TV, but I would like to reiterate it so that the person in Australia doesn't feel dissed. Um, around 2000-ish, people were always saying, well, how come you guys don't sell audio? Because streaming didn't exist back then. Uh, why don't you guys sell audio of the Road Rally? So that even though I can't come, uh -huh. I could buy cassettes or CDs uh, of the panels. So we do record the stuff, uh, every panel every year, with you know the occasional mistake where we miss one. But... Uh, I think it was around 2000, I spent, let's say, 60 or 70 hours editing the stuff down, not taking out any content, but taking out, you know, burps and hoes and mm. just stuff and cleaning it all up mm -hmm. and then um, made it a package that you could buy like the entire weekend. I think it was $5 a panel or the entire weekend for 30 bucks. And do you know, my recollection is like six people bought it. Huh. 
Yeah, so that was the day I said, never again. <laughs> well, I put that kind of because people, what they say yeah. and what they do are sometimes different. You know, it's kind of weird. We go, I, I've gone in there with with really high hopes and expectations, and I'll record a class, you know, on mm -hmm. those things. I never listened to it. I took notes. Yeah, but I never listened. You know, I, I, it's all up here. I think. Anyway. Well, the important stuff sticks. The the stuff that's yeah. important to you sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's a listing right now that's due tonight. Okay. It's the melancholy song for up to 12K. You know what okay. I'm talking about? Do you want me to grab the listing? I can you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to, because I'll give it to you in a nutshell. It's supposed to be a very simple guitar and vocal, piano and vocal. Uh, and it has to be a song, so it's got to have vocals. And um, <clears throat> it's, it, it's advised to stay simple guitar and vocal mm -hmm. or something. But you said that, you know, if you're going to add some instrumentation, you know, be, uh, be a little light on it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I did that. I have one that's been in the can for a while mm -hmm. that's perfect for this listing. I got this vocal. The old perfect, for, see, that scares me right there. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this 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 female vocalist that I work with, angelic voice. Yeah. yeah. She, okay, so she, you know, she wrote the song. I did all the, the. Uh, I didn't do the guitar, but I added and produced the stuff. So I added. I also. Are you on the copyright? Oh, dude, we both arranged it. We I know, but is your name on the copyright? Because you can't submit it if you produced it or arranged it. Your name has to be in the copyright. I play on it. Doesn't matter. I helped write it. As long as your name is on the copyright, yeah. as long as yeah. you're a co-writer. Me and her split everything 50-50. Okay, all right. Yeah, and we have a written agreement. Just keeping it kosher. We have a written agreement, too. Okay. Yeah. Don't we, Dave? This is my other co-writer here. I can't see him because the studio lights are so <laughs> bright. Our studio audience have won. So, anyway, here's the question, Michael. Yeah. So, I have the simple version, and I have the version with some pads and some upright bass on it. So I want to submit both. How would I would I title those differently? Like missing you, simple. I gotta say, it's the first time I've ever been asked that question in 26 years. So Yay. that's a good one. Um, honestly, without looking at the listing and kind of rehashing it, it would be tough for me. But I, I wouldn't submit it under different titles. Um, and you could end up with the same screener. It depends how many things come in. Um, is it a listing mm. that is going out to one of the screeners, friends in the industry, and they only want their ears on it? There are variables that could determine who listens to it. So I can't let's, remember if that was direct to music supervisor or what. But let's say that the same person hears the same song, but with two different titles. One's a fuller production, and one's a skinny you know, guitar vocal thing. Um, if I were the screener and I saw that pop up on my screen five minutes apart or an hour apart and realized it was the same thing under different titles, I would suspect the member of doing something skanky. Huh. Uh, and screeners do catch that stuff. We have people that will tr submit like songs that have been hits because they're trying to set up the screeners to not forward them and then go online and go, I submitted a song that was a number one hit and those idiots didn't forward it. Oh, wow. Um, people <clears throat> do stuff like that. It's pretty amazing. People, yes, people can be weird. Yeah, they I'll can. I'll tell you. Um, but I would say keep it under the same title and just put um, parenthetically after the title um, guitar vocal and then full band. Okay. All right, so uh, so this and then parenthesis, guitar, vocal, and then yeah, and then full band. Okay. Yeah, that's probably the best way to go. Frankly, if I had the listing in front of me and looked at it, I might actually advise you, you know, just go with the guitar, vocal, or just go with the fuller band. I have it. It's her, you have it. You have it. All right, read it. Oh, uh, here. I'll take it. Thank you. Okay, the listing says, heartfelt, indie singer-songwriter songs. Oh, that's good. It actually says writer. Sometimes I make a typo. It says song worder. Did you know if you're typing in all caps that word uh, spell check doesn't catch it? Indie singer-songwriter songs with male or female vocals are urgently needed for an up to $12,000 non-exclusive direct-to-music supervisor placement in the hit TV series. Um, 
they're looking for down to mid tempo songs that have the general style and vibe of the following references we got from the client. I will follow you into the dark by Death Cab, uh, Clam Crab Cockle by Joanna Newsom. Um, so only those two refs. Please submit heartfelt songs. So obviously the refs came from them because usually we would have three. Oh, it says we got it from the client. Duh. Okay. Um, please submit heartfelt songs. I have a melancholic mood uh, with compelling melodies and lyrics and chorus. It should say a chorus. Typo probably on me. Um, that's dripping with emotion. Stripped down songs with just an intimate vocal and acoustic guitar could easily work for this request. If your song is really, if your song is really solid, a small, subtle ensemble slash band behind the singer could work as well. But you'd be wise to keep it on the simple side, um, not elaborately produced or arranged. A vocal with an honest. Okay, so here's what I would do. Mm -hmm. But I have inside information. Okay, so hey, people always want to know. Do you guys have? Ins yeah, the inside information is not so inside. It's public. Um, we got the references from them. If we got the references from them, there's a pretty good chance uh -oh. that they have already locked into a vibe. Right. So if both of the references have a light band, then I would probably pitch a light band. If both of the references have uh, are stripped down guitar vocal, then I would probably go that way on my submission. And if it's one or the other, I need my own pen. Here. Thank you. Um, if, yeah, I need the one with the cap, so I have something to play with. Um, <laughs> if I. If the references, usually we have three refs, but in the case of just having two references like this, if one is full band and one is stripped down, then it's anybody's guess. Okay. Sounds good. And, you know, the reason I ask is because when you submit something, isn't that supposed to be like the final product? Unless um, they ask you to change it. Um, for film and TV, they don't want demos. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's, you know... Um, so that's why I'm asking I should submit both because they might like the one with the pads and the bass underneath. They could, but they're, again, if the two examples were stripped down, then I would go with stripped down because we got, it says we got the references from them. All right, all right. So why not give them something that's closer stripped. to what the, excuse me, what they like or what they've shown a preference for? Then again, if it's the other way, where both of those aren't that stripped down, then go with the less stripped down version. I gotta listen to the refs again. Okay, that's all I got. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. I think that um, there was some band behind. I'm the kind of guy. It's like 11:45. Yeah. Okay, I gotta upload. You're not the only. <laughs> trust me. How many of you guys? And we are getting some good questions in the chat room, by the way. But okay. Uh, I, look, I, I'm maybe the reason this company works as well as it works is. I'm you guys, you know what I mean? It's, I'm, I've been around musicians. You've got the quality of, the, of a musician. You've I've been around be. musicians, not just music, but musicians my entire adult life from the age of 19 years old till today It's 63. So I kind of know you guys. I, I know your good stuff. I know your bad stuff. I know, you know, it's funny as recently as today on that $25,000 listing, we're having the discussion. The guys in the A&R room did not do a bad job at all writing that up. I just felt like it it could have been more clear. Hmm. And I'm always um, asking them to write to our audience. It's not a matter of how sophisticated your knowledge is of music or it's not how many big words you know that you can throw in a listing it's what can you do to write this so that everybody can understand it but at the same time don't insult anybody's intelligence Man. and at the same time it's got to be relatable for the screener because if the screener's sitting down and they're interpreting it in a different way than the members did then their feedback isn't valid and their choices might not be valid so it's tough okay. do you play anything um i play a few things very poorly okay like, not good enough to go sit in with a band. I'm just a keyboard player. A little guitar, not much at all. Anyway, um, my last, that was my last question, but since I'm a computer musician, mm -hmm. and I know we all probably are working on computers to make our music these days, you know, some are still working with guitar and mics and analog recording gear, but if you are working on computers and you haven't heard of this magazine, 
this is worth the $90 a year subscription. $90 a year? What do you mean? It's not free? Uh -uh. <laughs> this... I'm, I'm poking fun at and people. And it who, even whatever. comes with a DVD of 8 gigabytes of plugins and samples and sample libraries and 66 instruments and effects. I've been getting this for three years. Of course, I had to stop the subscription because they keep coming. And I love studying it real intensely and I'm learning a magazine everything person. in it. I love magazines. So, guys, this is, you know, electronic musicians, okay for gear and reviews, but I'm not supposed Demon. to say. No, I mean, I, I just, you know, we try not to insult anybody. Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, this, you this weren't is being insulting. No, I was. This is better for uh, learning how to use your plugins. See, this is mastering secrets right there. So this is a great resource for you guys. Anybody new to this? I've been doing computer music for about five years now, and there was there was a chance where I had to make a lot of music really quick for a tribute band I was in. I got so good at it, and my original material sounded so much like film and TV that people said, "Dude, you got to do film and TV." I, it, it's you know what? Nobody should ever give up their dream of creating the grand opus or the heartfelt song that explains tells the story of something really important to them or something that happened in their life I would never want anybody to give that up but you can do both and I know there's one guy out there that went all over that went on the forums about this and I'm sure I'm gonna insult this gentleman again but uh, I said something like you can paint houses by day and paint portraits by night and I may have alluded to classical music or jazz or something. And this guy's like, oh my God, you know, uh, jazz or classical is not painting houses. Um, I certainly didn't intend to insult that gentleman or anybody else, but the, the fact is both of those disciplines require using a brush and paint and being careful not to be sloppy and other aspects of the skill set um, but yet they're different and you can paint houses by day to earn a paycheck to support your ability to paint you know landscapes or portraits at night we need a new phrase a new motto like like write submit forget repeat yeah that because you always say this to people what the that, portraits that, what are you painting houses by day and yeah, portraits by night that's one of your main advice points of it's we're in one of the few industries where you can do that. You know, it's not like, um, let's say you're somebody that writes prose or poetry. Um, there aren't, I mean, I guess technically, yeah, you could write a, a blog by day if it generated income. Uh, you could write a blog by day and write your, you know, the great American novel at night. Um, but we are in an industry that actually gives people money for creating music that while it may not be rocket science there is an art to it which is creating the right music for oh. the moods so yeah they've that's it right there i think it comes through okay computer music they're a british company uh yeah just look them up 90 bucks a year and you have to sip tea while reading it <laughs> beer or wine no, they're, they're no. British. So you have to get oh, pinky up. Get that. Yes, I'm getting tired, huh? Um, do you want to take some of these guys? Because stuff is... The same way you paint polar bears. Okay, let's get some models going. The same way you paint polar bears. Jekyll and Hyde. There were some really good questions that flew by earlier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got them? Genevieve okay. wanted to know why you moved to Miami. Or what made you move there? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know that it's going to educate anybody, but I moved to Miami because at one point, because I was an avid scuba diver at a very young age, I thought about maybe going into marine biology. That's what made me look at the University of Miami. Um, but then once I actually said, I'm going to college, I decided to be a business major with a focus on eventually going to law school. And then recording studio changed all that. So business major, music minor. Mojo, the DVD um, still now does come with the magazine. They stopped it for a while, where you just had to download all the all the all the software and and stuff. But they started putting it back on on, on the cover of the magazine, like attaching it right to the cover. There was lots of uh, people were talking about um, vintage music, like our vintage listings, and right. why why do you have to send 
why do they have to be vintage? Why do they have oh, okay. to be recorded vintage? vintage? Um, that's a great question. So Bria just said that somebody wanted to know for um, uh, for the vintage listings, why do the companies want stuff that was written, let's say, in the 80s and recorded in the 80s? Um, because I've covered this before and we've covered it at the Red Rally. When you hear stuff that was recorded last week and somebody worked really, really hard to make it sound vintage versus something that was actually recorded in the 80s, everybody in the room would go, oh, I can hear the difference. So the publishers, it's becoming a thing now. There's one company we've worked with for a very long time and they're an awesome, awesome, awesome company that we absolutely adore the people in it and their work ethic and all that stuff. Um, they have made a name for themselves by only proffering vintage music to the industry. So they get the first call when somebody needs, you know, somebody's got a flashback scene that goes to 1965, they know who to call. And they absolutely, part of their marketing thing is we guarantee that everything that we're going to send you was recorded in that era. So, um, and you can hear a difference. You really can. Even though it may sound worse, probably will sound worse, it sounds right. Um, if a film or TV spot will only air maybe 10 seconds, why does a screener care about the whole song being perfect? Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear Bria well or not. So if, if they're probably going to use 5, 10, 15, 30 seconds, whatever, some piece of a song or an instrumental, yeah. why do the screeners care about the whole thing being really good? Because it could be the first five seconds that aren't very good, and they'll never get to the other seconds, <laughs> right. number one. Number two, you never know which part they're going to use. It's got to be good everywhere. I heard seven seconds of a cue of mine on a show once. Yeah. W yeah. Was it the first seven seconds, middle seven seconds? You know, it was last summer. I don't remember. Okay. But I said, oh, my gosh, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> that had to feel good. <laughs> If you had to uh, play a whole round of go golf with one club, what would it be? <laughs> dun, 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 I don't know dun, dun, anything dun. about golf. Very little. Um, eight iron. And, really? and frankly, I don't hit the long ball. I, I'm when I tee off uh, my drives. If I, I'm straight. And I, no, no pun intended. I mean that I hit them right up the middle more often than not, okay? So if I hit a 150 to 200-yard drive right up the middle, that's a pretty good lie. But my shot is an 8-iron from, you know, like two-thirds of the way down the, the fairway. Um, I amaz I, I'm not a great golfer, you know. I, I don't have amazing scores, but the real golfers, like Ralph's a pretty, my friend Ralph Murphy's a pretty darn good golfer. Um, he uh, He's sometimes amazed at how good I am from like, you know, I don't know, 50 feet out. Um, it's my talent. You got some, got some more questions coming through here. Do you, do you, tie, Wait, do you tie your own flies? No, um, I've only gone fly fishing, I believe three times. Um, I'm more of a, I love live bait, I love fishing with lures, jigs, all that stuff. If you but, could play with golf with anyone, who would it be? Um, Ralph Murphy. Honestly, oh, I... Oh, your bud, huh? Your, uh, our, our, our uh, teacher guy, huh? Yeah. Um, Songwriter extraordinaire. Yeah, it's not that I aspire to play golf with Tiger Woods. I aspire to have a great day with a close friend and, you know talk about life, love, um, our successes, our failures, and sadly, most of the time, we end up talking about musicians <laughs> in, a, in a good way. Boy, they're, they're piling on some questions yeah. there. If you could have dinner with anyone from the music world, past or present, musician, engineer? Um, I've already done it. Um, God, why am I drawing a total blank? Uh, Beatles engineer. Um, Jeff Emmerich. Jeff Emmerich, thank you. Uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, I, and I invited Rob Shirelli to go. Jeff and I had dinner probably three or four weeks before the road rally, I think three years ago. He was our honoree. And I always like to meet the honorees beforehand to get to know them a little bit. And uh, I got to tell you, having dinner, and I read his book, uh, I believe it's called All You Need Is Ears, I think, uh, which for my money is the best of all the Beatles studio type books. And having dinner with him was just friggin' awesome. So do you listen to CDs? 
Uh, yeah. So he, um, what's his name? I he just went by. Jimmy, he wants to know what's in your CD player right now. Um, a taxi member. Oh. I can't remember which one, but it was a taxi <laughs> member. Uh, you're not screening, you're enjoying. Yeah, which is pretty rare. I, I usually listen to music uh, from a pretty, you know, business-related perspective. But, oh, actually, I can tell you exactly who it is. Um, it's a former taxi member named Melody Guy, G-U-Y, Melody Guy. She wrote, I, I still, 20 years later, remember she wrote the line, um, the sky is like a dirty shirt. I thought that was such a, you know, Nashville's really big on writing visually descriptive lyrics well the sky is like a dirty shirt you know works for me okay um michael what would you like to see taxi doing in five years that it doesn't do now that's a tough one what would i like to see taxi doing in five years that it doesn't do now um giving me more time to spend with my family <laughs> how's that uh There are a couple things that we've been quietly working on that have not come to fruition as fast as I would like because we had other stuff that we wanted to perfect beforehand. That stuff that I can't tell you about because everybody just copies it anyway. Oh, oh well. Um, have you ever considered open listings meaning not specific listings being asked of taxi, but songs we could submit that taxi could match up with requests, reverse of how it is now. The reason uh, I, I don't want to answer that fully, <laughs> and I'm That's sorry a, that I have to be a little one. coy on That's that one. That's a good one. But the reason that we don't run listings that are open and we match up your music to somebody else's something is the time and man hours that it would take to do that to do it in reverse much more expensive than doing the way we do it now so if you guys would like to pay and i'm not being facetious but if you want to pay five or six hundred dollars a year for your membership we could do that for you um also then it comes down to one of our a and r people going i think that that song should go to that company and we're going to pitch it for you, and then it doesn't end up in the TV show or the movie. Whose fault is that? Well, not mine personally, but ours as a company. So we kind of, you know what? You walk up to any songwriter in Nashville, any pro songwriter in Nashville, and probably a, a lot of aspiring pros or people who are just under you know, that level in Nashville and say, what kind of song did you just write, and who would be three artists that you could pitch to? They could tell you. Yet so many musicians out there in the world feel like it should be somebody else's problem. I just create what I do. I just make music and you guys figure it out for me. A professional knows what they're creating and where it will work. Mm -hmm. Or if it won't. Um, Taxi has lots of listings for radio, for pop, uh, AC, R&B, country, but f much fewer listings for hip hop. Does the hip hop world source new material differently than the pop AC country world? No pun intended, no play on words intended, but it is more of a brotherhood. Um, mm -hmm. I will tell you that I have personally driven over uh, to Sony. I've personally gone to Universal and met with the president uh, at Universal. This is years ago, I met with the president uh, of the Urban Music <clears throat> Department and he was very courteous, um, took the meeting and paid attention, but I could just see it in his eyes the whole time. It's like, dude, you don't live in our world, which I don't. Um, you're not part of our community, therefore, you know what, it's like Nashville, same kind of thing. You have to really work hard and earn your stripes in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Same thing is true in the urban music world. So. There are a lot of people that are really interconnected. The um, same thing is true basically in almost, e even in the pop world now, because the two have crossed over so much. There are all these different writing camps, and it's about who you hang with and who you write with and who was your roommate 10 years ago when you guys were both coming up in the industry. And it's not so political so much as it is a comfort level and a trust level of knowing 
who you can work with and get quality stuff. So we have not been able to successfully, um, at least me personally, been able to penetrate that world. However, we do have some screeners, um, three that come to mind, that have been part of the urban music community for decades. And frankly, they are trusted in a big way by the people on that side of the industry. So they bring in listings from people that know them and trust them. The music goes through their ears before it goes back to the people in the industry. So in that regard, we, we do what we can. Hmm. I'm sorry, did I wake you up, young lady? Yes, you, <laughs> you know, I know hip hop is a big, big popular genre in pop right yeah. now, what, you know, whatever. I've been trying to write, uh, when, when a listing comes through, I'll check it out, say, oh, is it time for me to write, try to write another hip hop song? Because <laughs> I want to be a part of that scene a little bit, you know? Everybody should want to be part of it because it's the most in-demand genre at any moment in time for film and TV. Um, EDM is right up there with it. Um, pop pop is, is really big, but um, I, I've been very open about this at the Road Rally and on Taxi TV that uh, our members coined the phrase years ago, Oprah Hop. A, a big portion of the music that got used on the Oprah Winfrey show was from taxi members and they had to create a lot of um kind of homogenized hip-hop it wasn't excuse me very of the street it didn't have the edge maybe or authenticity okay. that hip-hop artists of the day would produce so i've been on a personal mission and just made major headway the other day um i think i'll be able to pull it off at this year's road rally there are a lot of kids in the hood that are come from really terrible socioeconomic backgrounds they don't don't grow up in traditional families and frankly they don't have a lot to look for it uh, look forward to in life so they end up being drug dealers and and, and, and whatever uh, but you know they they look at the world and go gee the only way out of the hood for me is to become a drug dealer um, a hip-hop star um or a basketball well, player God. or technology's gotten to the point where it's a little easier for them now to do it too. right so i'm remember that little kid at the two road rallies ago oh yeah you know, that hip-hop thing absolutely it was like wow yeah it wasn't hip-hop but it was wow i remember okay, yeah. that um anyway so um i've been talking to other entities um that help children um from socio-economically deprived backgrounds oh. And I'm probably going to do it either right before or right after this year's road rally, where we're going to do like a little mini road rally to show young children, hey, you know what? You can take your love of hip hop and by doing film and TV cues, um, earn a living. Oh, that's precious. Doing this. And the cool yeah. thing is the industry is dying for more authenticity in hip hop, but they need stuff that has uh, doesn't have illegal samples in it. They want stuff that sounds a little dirtier and of the street mm -hmm. um so hopefully i can make this happen you know and, and get some kids active and, and thinking about doing something really fruitful with their love okay. of music That's a good idea good idea pick one uh, and then we should wrap up in a couple minutes because one we're, of them we're three minutes over one of them a while ago someone asked who would be your dream panelist to be able to get at, at the road rally um, I honestly don't have a great answer. I saw somebody asking about Stephen Pressfield before. I have spoken to him. Um, I love his books. I, Someone asked that too. Yeah. Um, he and I have actually had discussions to the point where at one point he said, all right, you know what? I normally don't do this. I'll do it for you. And then like a day later, he called back or emailed me and said, Mm, not going to do it. Um, also, you know what? I want to play one of your pieces of music. Um, Bria just reminded me. You want to pl play the hip hop one or the chill out lounge one? Which one is better? The latest. Well, you know, the, okay. The chill out got me got me signed into a library. The the hip hop one is pending. It from from a listing that was recent. So if it got signed to a library, don't play it because it was not exclusive. Um, don't right, play. So it shouldn't be a problem. No, it's fine. It's okay. Fine. All right. Or it's play. Fine. Or play the hip hop one. What? Which one do you want me to play? Give her a title. The name. Oh, uh, do uh, 
Do my murderous fantasy life. Yeah. <laughs> to tell you honestly I mean it's definitely a mashup of uh, you know spacey stuff on top of the hip hop group for listening guys and the, the good kudo comments thank you um yeah honestly i'm the wrong guy to ask about hip-hop i i'm just i, I would be faking the answer and I, I just won't do that but i do want to address something i saw go by in the chat room that i thought was a great question um it says why are, in so many words I, i'm paraphrasing here why are members hearing crickets um, more so than ever before, which means their stuff is being forwarded, but they're not hearing anything from the companies. There are several reasons. Um, number one, the landscape has become so competitive for libraries that they are, understand that the vast majority of music libraries are one, two, three person companies. I know that seems hard to believe, but there are brand name music libraries that you know and deal with that are a three person company, like a financial person, um, the creative person who is also the pitching person and usually some form of assistant that does like metadata entry and there's a lot of it. So um, because of that, even with the, best of in with the best of intentions, they run listings. They find that somebody is a show that we work with all the time is looking for XYZ kind of music and we need lots of it. And we run a listing for them and we send them the music and then we see the files sitting there not even opened up, you know, three weeks later. Uh, Why? Mm. Because they have to make a choice. Do I put food on the table by pitching this week or do I sit down and listen to a bunch of music? And remember, they might have run not just one listing where they got four forwards and 19 forwards, uh, but they have, might have run three or four listings that each had 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 90 forwards. So, and it's not just us. We are not the only place they're getting music from. Because so many of the libraries now accept music online, which they didn't used to do, they have, they don't want to, no library wants to be the library that doesn't have their ear, you know, putting their ear on the railroad track, listening for the train coming. They are afraid that somebody else, one of their competitors, is going to hear the good stuff before they do. So they put up a thing that says submit music. And okay. even though their intentions are good <clears throat> and they're honest people, 
they don't have the time. And then they run a taxi listing because they know the stuff is going to be filtered and it's going to be high quality. And they are getting requests for it from the shows that they work with. And they get that. And, oh, God, they don't have the time. I mean, honestly, I felt guilty this weekend. Um, I didn't work at all yesterday until late last night. I answered probably 20 or 30 emails. But basically, you know, other than going to hear some music midday on Saturday, I basically had two days off, which I rarely do on a weekend. And the whole time I felt guilty and just felt overwhelmed <laughs> that I had so much work that I should be doing. Oh, you got to take time off, man. Really? Um, I know I should. Don't you? Don't you? No. Not, not enough. You not know. nearly enough. And, and I know, you know what? Should I disseminate great information to our members? Or should I just go, ah, screw them. You know what? I'd much rather, you know, take some me time. Mm. Um, the library owners confide in me. Um, I know a lot of them. I mean, I'm, and I'm pretty neutral, if you will. I'm not a competitor, but I understand their world. And they confide in me, and I'm not going to drop any names, obviously, but they're drowning. So that's one reason is they're just drowning, even though the person that asked that question mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, don't hit me with the, their, the drowning answer. So that's one reason. Um, the other reason is libraries, like any form of widget or art, if you go, if you read a magazine article from five years ago, it's going to sound a little dated. If you read, um, watch a TV show from five or ten years ago, it's going to look dated. The the script is going to be different. The music in the show is going to be different. The quality of the camera shots going to be different. The editing is going to be different. Same thing is true of music and music libraries. So library owners know this and it eats away at them. They're going, man, I need more fresh music in my library. Therefore, I'm going to reach out to my favorite resource that provides me with good filtered music and that's Taxi and they have the best of intentions and then they get a bunch of stuff and they just don't get around ask, or opening it up quickly enough. And it upsets the members and it upsets me on the members' behalf because I want the members to get deals. That's my job is to make sure that those folks on the other side of that camera lens are, are getting deals and making money with their music. And when somebody runs a listing, even though it's a genuine request and with the best of intentions and they don't get to it, I feel the pain of our members. And so I address this early in the show. What is Taxi doing? We are kind of veering away from the libraries that we do a lot of work for and opening up new channels for our members in the form of foreign libraries and libraries that our members have not worked with before okay. so that we don't have this problem. Good. So hopefully that answered the question. I think it was jean that asked the question. Um, Good deal. This libraries thing is a whole subject in itself, I tell you. It is. Well, uh, Arnold Margolis or, or Marfoglia says, I got forward and never heard anything. Thanks for explaining. Arnold, it, honestly, uh, and I don't mean to sound unkind, but you could get forwarded and they could have listened to the music and go, it doesn't do anything for me. You know, a lot of times it's not a matter of you were forwarded and they don't think that you're good enough. It's a lot of times you were forwarded and let's say Taxi Forward's 32 pieces of hip hop. We don't forward based on these, you know, this one's better than that one. We just look for the bar and the target and forward. On their end, they're going, okay, I don't need 32 pieces of hip hop, but maybe I could use five or 10. So they are filtering based on which ones are the best ones. And more importantly, just because it's really good hip hop doesn't mean it's really good hip hop for the shows they're working on. Certain types of shows will use certain types of hip hop. Some types could be urban, you know, like urban dramedy hip hop. Others could you be using more comedic, um, quirky hip hop. Mm -hmm. Others could be mm -hmm. using darker, more like sinister or right. criminal sounding hip hop. So there's so many things that can make it all go wrong. I'm sorry. I want it to be right for everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more question, and then let's wrap it up because we're 15 minutes over. By the way, I want to compliment you. Really, really excellent job on those questions. Oh, thank you, I'm thank you. really grateful that you put that effort into it. 
did I'm, a really good job. I'm surprised I reached out to even do this. I mean, I was having fun with last week's show, and I said, yeah, it looks like fun. And then today I woke up, oh, my God, i got to do this today. <laughs> but it's not – isn't it easy? I mean, look at this room full of people. They yeah, love this stuff. Actually, I started getting into it after about five or ten minutes. It's cool. <laughs> Why aren't there more requests for instrumentals to labels and producers than specifying lyrics and vocals be included? What? Why aren't there more requests for instrumentals to labels and producers? I don't really understand. I mean, do they mean like why aren't people just asking for tracks? Like why aren't but labels just asking for backing tracks? And they do. I mean, frankly, we run those listings. You know, sometimes I wonder uh -huh. if, if people really do a good job of looking at the... There's a lot more diversity in our listings. I'm not talking ethnic diversity. I'm talking musical diversity and entities running the listings. Uh, I, I just saw somebody comment somewhere the other day saying, Taxi never runs instrumental listings. We've never run this many instrumental <laughs> listings in our history as we do now. So we've got some people complaining, all you guys do is run instrumental listings, and other people complain they don't run instrumental listings. And maybe they're not seeing them because they're not looking under instrumental. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bria says maybe it, they're not. Some people get confused and they look under a genre for instrumentals right. in that genre, but all of our instrumental listings are under instrumental. They're not. Under what an the odd list. place to put the instrumental listings under the word Sometimes instrumental. I like them. Then I don't have to call a call a vocalist over. Yeah. <laughs> um, Michael, who's your number one? Are you you're married, of course. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my family. <laughs> <laughs> they're instrumental and then they're instrumental. Okay, cool. I guess right. that's about it. Thank you. You got you it, sir. You really did a great job. Seriously, oh, okay. uh, I had high expectations. I don't really know you. I've you know I've seen you before at the road rally and stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, and I'm aware of you you know online. But you really, really, really did a good job. Thank you. Oh, you got it. All right, so. Uh, Craig uh, Robar, I was going to say Robert, but he's not <laughs> French. Um, are you? I don't know. Maybe you are. Um, Craig Robar and from beautiful Sherman Oaks, California. And also, I want to let you know that next week is the night. If anybody wants to collaborate who's from my area, you know, hit me up on Facebook. Same name and everything. I'm always looking for collaborators and other musicians. There you go. And also, Oh, next week is um, Steve uh, Steve Barden's Steve coming Barton. back. Um, he Steve Barden hit such a home run on the show a few weeks ago, and everybody's like, bring him back, bring him back. Well, he's got next Monday off for President's Day, so he's coming back. So I'm excited about that. We will see you guys next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Thank you, Craig. Bye, everybody.